Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. And as you can see, I am joined by the bait god, none other than the pro from SK Gaming, Morton. He's back on the channel. He's unfortunately feeling a little bit under the weather today, so he couldn't join me on voice, but he can finish off this grand, grand challenge live for us right now, playing the classic log bait. And more than just showing the gameplay, well, the gameplay will obviously be front and center in the video today, but I also wanted to ask Morton three strategy keys regarding the old school classic bait deck with Knight and Inferno Tower in it. So he's going to go ahead and answer those questions for you guys as well. The three questions, we'll talk about them in between matches so we can focus on the gameplay during match. We're also going to share a replay against the most difficult matchup for bait, which is Minor Mortar, according to Morton, who has, by the way, I was just checking his profile out, he has 1.2 million challenge cards won. That's got to be some sort of a record or really close, right? That's incredible. Anyway, the three questions we're going to cover are what separates a pro bait player from an above average bait player? Question number two are what is the most important strategy keys for classic log bait? And question number three is what is the biggest mistake that Morton sees other players making when playing classic log bait? So again, we'll talk about those in between uh, matches here. And you can see going into double elixir time here, I apologize, I was about 45 seconds late into this match there. I was actually watching my DMs to get those strategy tips. But we're going against the Lava Hound Minor Double Dragon deck, which even though Lava Loon might not be in the best spot right now in the meta, this deck is still incredibly viable. I've shared it on the channel, I think, a couple weeks ago, but it's still incredibly uh, incredibly powerful right now in the meta. So this is going to be a close one here. 1,100 damage on our left tower, 1,306 on our right tower. We're cycling back to another Inferno Tower for this Lava Hound here. Lightning comes down by the opponent. Princess set up opposite lane. So it looks like this defense will be okay. But man, this is going to be a close one here with 20 seconds left in regulation. So here we go, Baby Dragon in the back against that Princess. We're going to go ahead and use that Goblin Barrel, of course. The good news is, is that the uh, Barbarian Barrel is out of cycle, and we can pressure that left lane with a Knight and a Goblin Gang, a pro play. Well, I guess it's just not a pro play. It's just a play that you see a lot of players, a lot of good players uh, make. When they know that the Barbarian Barrel or the Log is out of cycle, they'll go aggressive with the Goblin Gang and the Knight on the tower, and that's going to allow him to cycle back to another Goblin Barrel before they cycle back to another Barbarian Barrel. We connect there. A rocket's going to finish it off. Actually, a rocket and a log will finish it off here. Uh, one HP remaining. Lightning comes down the right tower, but that's going to be GG. Morton picks up the first victory. So let's go ahead and pull up Morton's response, guys, as we wait for him to hop into match number two to the first question that I asked him. And I'm going to put up the text on the screen for you guys as well as we watch to make sure we catch him on the next match. So what separates a bait pro from an above average bait player? He said, for me, the difference is that a pro knows every matchup and here we go into the next match guys so we'll go into the next match and we'll finish his answer here he said to me the difference between a pro and every other player is a, ma a pro knows how to handle every single matchup like against 2.6 hog cycle for example you have to get the most damage with rocket and logs and princess and other point is that normal a normal player doesn't care that much about the opponent's cycle but it's really important sometimes you can finish a pump with a knight goblin gang barrel instead of just rocketing so just knowing every matchup and the best way to get better at matchups is honestly and, and it sounds tedious but once you do it a couple times I guarantee you'll say okay you know I actually feel myself getting better here is picking out a friend or a clan mate and once you lose in a grand challenge or against a ladder deck and you thought dude I just struggled against that matchup what you guys can do is have that clan mate anybody it can be anybody say hey can you play this deck can we friendly battle a couple times until I learn what I'm doing wrong and that's the way to get better at specific matchups that of course and watching a pro player here on CWA mobile gaming or any other YouTube channel or, or stream and uh, in, in finding the ways that they handle ma matchups that you struggle with and uh, certainly that's, that's another easy way to get better at those matchups find what the pro is doing that you don't normally don't do and you can see we're already halfway through as I blabbed on on that answer <laughs> to this second match here and we've been able to connect with some serious damage uh, thanks to the Goblin Barrel and the Goblin Gang pressure on that light uh, the left tower, excuse me. This is a three musketeer deck, it looks like uh, with the Battle Ram in there, certainly not a golem deck, and there's the three muskies. So obviously we'll be rocketing the uh, the right two musketeers here. Princess does re really, really well against three musketeers. It looks like Rocket was not in cycle, I guess. Uh, my bad, missing that. So Princess is going to go ahead and get one shot on. Log's going to get another shot on. What is he going to do? Knight on the left. One musketeer does lock on temporary on that onto that right 
Light Tower, but now he's going to have to respond to this knight, and he does so with a Lumberjack here. So as we're approaching double elixir time, there goes the Goblin Barrel from Morton, catching him without that login cycle there, and then a Dark Goblin in response. We're going to get more chip damage onto that left tower, thanks to the Dark Goblin in the left lane. So not too bad here with about 40 seconds left. He's got to deal with these Musketeers. He does have Rocket and Cycle this time, and he opts to use it. Uh, that's smart play there, and I think the opponent might have wanted to split his three Musketeers on the other side. That way, Morton wouldn't rocket the tower that he's going for. Usually, three Musketeer players want to play the one Musketeer against the tower that they're trying to take down. Otherwise, you're just going to bait out that big spell and kind of negate your push on that other tower. Not always the case. Sometimes you want to switch it up, but, you know, in that situation, if I was the opponent, I would have split him the opposite way. So now we have a Goblin Barrel connecting there. No, no damage. A nice Rascal play by the opponent. What an interesting three Musketeer deck. Dark Goblin, Rascals, Lumberjack. Three cards that we don't necessarily uh, usually see with uh, three Musketeers. So another good log value there. It's going to allow him to just rely on that Ice Spirit and the Tower to finish off that boy Rascal. And here he goes. He's going to rocket the two Musketeers again. The opponent does opt to split those three Musketeers behind the King Tower. And that was obviously the correct play on their part. So here we go. It's going to be a Goblin Barrel coming down. That will connect for more damage here. Another thing noteworthy about this matchup is they have Log. And usually, nine times out of ten, three Musketeer players will actually be playing Zap. So that was did not work to Morton's advantage there, but he, he makes quick work of that matchup, finishing off with a rocket again there. So question number two is, what are the most important strategy keys and rules to bait? And he said, not overextending if you are low in Elixir. And we're already in a match. Oh, oh my god. Alright, so against Epic Wheezy here. But he says, not overextending if you are low in Elixir. Defend uh, with like a Miner and an Ice Spirit instead of your Knight. And keep your important cards, like, uh, like against Mortar, for example. The Knight is very important to distract the Mortar. And if you played against a Goblin Gang, for example, you would have, or if you played uh, against a Gang, you would have a big problem. A key is to start with a Barrel in the safe spot spot or start with a princess in the back and don't leak elixir play defensively every time try to get chip damage so basically he's not a big fan when you're playing bait it's not the deck that you want to be leaking elix elixir play defensively keep cycling those princesses in the back and uh, just let the match kind of come to you early on while you're waiting to identify your opponent's stack so here we go it's going to be a goblin barrel coming down the right tower for morton in the safe spot still using that safe spot against nato obviously that's going to be the correct move nine times out of ten for your first goblin barrel you don't want to get that king tower activation because it does really well against bait a nice catch there protecting his princess and forcing a poison out of the opponent so epic wheezy with an aggressive poison there taking down the princess and doing some damage to the knight so morton's going to pressure a little bit at the bridge here he comes in with the goblin barrel and the knight and the goblin gang and that was really lucrative here guards being played by the opponent a log comes down we get that right tower all the way down to 1358 just in that heads up play and I, I saw that poison I was thinking that Morton might be pressuring and exactly what he did there obviously Barbarian uh, Barrel not in cycle and the number one thing you want to do whether you're playing classic bait or any bait for that matter is obviously lean heavily on once you know the opponent's log or Barbarian Barrel is out of cycle you punish then you go aggressive just like Morton did there so now Barbarian Barrel is used again that opens up a potential Goblin Barrel play and there it is immediately coming down with the Goblin Barrel. That's going to connect for all sorts of damage. Barbarian Barrel again out of cycle for the opponent. And this is going to be an important and tough, tricky defensive sequence here. The Inferno Tower does take down that Lava Hound before the E-Drag gets in range. We have a Princess sniping opposite lane. We have an Ice Spirit played, and he's going to opt to just go ahead and rocket that uh, E-Dragon down. Smart play by Morton there. Again, he has that right tower close to Rocket Log range there. Now, he has it in Rocket lane range. <laughs> what? Alright, so Log comes down there. Princess stays alive, finishes off those guards. One more shot, but at least she gets a shot against that Mega Minion. So now we have, we could potentially play a Princess at the bridge here in the right lane to finish off that tower later on rather than wasting a Rocket. He might opt to use the Rocket again against that E-Dragon. He does exactly that. So Rocket comes down, Miner on the left tower. Uh, Poison comes down for the opponent. We play a Gang right against that Miner, and the two Spirit Goblins stay alive to help out against those Lava Pups. Uh, Goblin Barrel comes down, does connect for a little bit of damage. That's going to be log range and GG just like that Morton finishes off with a clean sweep in this grand challenge makes it look easy guys I'm going to ask Morton to share a, a, a replay of that mortar matchup I told you about because he did say that was the most challenging matchup so I'm going to go ahead and do that and while I do that 
I'm going to probably cut out here while he shares the replay. Let's say, wow, GG, because he finished that flawlessly. And uh, what I want to do is af answer the third question while we watch that mortar replay. I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, guys, here's the deck that we're going to be watching right now. Let's go ahead into this replay. And the third question was, what is the most important or the most important mistake not to make? Does that make any sense? <laughs> What's the number one mistake and how can you not make it, right? He says, for me, it's starting too aggressive. If you don't know the deck from the opponent, which is 99% of the time for us mere mortals who don't play at the top of ladder and memorize every opponent that we face. He said, uh, don't play early rockets. For example, like a musketeer in the back, Morton would not rocket that early. Uh, if it's really early in the match because he doesn't want to overextend he wants to make sure he saves his rocket in case he needs it for another card that's more important and uh so er being too aggressive with a rocket early and just being too aggressive you know by any stretch with, with any card early on so a princess at the bridge would be a mistake early too many early rockets would be a mistake he says and uh especially if your opponent has minion horde you want to make sure you're saving your princess that can be another common mistake save your princess for the minion horde so this is against that mortar matchup guys that I talked about and again here gonna be a very tough difficult matchup according to Morton the most challenging and it looks like that dark goblin is gonna stay alive forcing out a log out of Morton while the miner does connect to his right tower this deck is so challenging with the prince version of the mortar in my opinion this is either with the prince or the rascals in that spot for five elixir this is the best mortar deck in the game I actually covered this deck somewhat recently with midfinger on the channel if you want to check that out probably about a week a week and a half ago I'll link it in the description for you guys along with the deck link of course for classic log bait so here comes the log on the right lane that was a really smart goblin barrel guys by Morton if you didn't notice that he played it really early that way the log wouldn't take care of his princess and he forced a dark goblin out of the opponent it's kind of a small play that is tough to notice if you're just watching the replay in, in, in regular time as we are not dissecting every single move although that might be interesting in the future to do for some sort of a video uh, but yeah I think that that aggressive goblin barrel, just think about it. it. It baited out the log, of course. It also baited out that dark goblin. So just a really smart move, and he did it again there, right? Playing that uh, goblin barrel really, really quickly. That way the princess stays alive. You don't want to give the opponent value out of that log, taking down the goblin barrel and the princess at the bridge. Really important play there. So here comes a charging prince in the right lane. That inferno tower for a 5 for 5 trade will actually hard counter that prince. You don't need to support it any further. So you can see prince does get the charge on, but now the inferno tower is beaming up, and of course the opponent and doesn't have a zap or anything to reset that Inferno Tower. So now things are pretty even, close to even here as we enter in with about 30 seconds left in this match. A, an aggressive Prince at the bridge and a trick barrel there or a, uh, uh, a hidden barrel with a rocket in the Goblin Barrel. Uh, the Knight play there is going to intercept that Prince and force him to not get a charge off on that tower or the Knight. And then the Goblin Gang will finish off that Miner on the right tower. Things are still even with 10 seconds left. This is a beautiful play here, guys. If you know the opponent's going to counter you with the Goblin gang a beautiful play obviously is going in with the goblin barrel in front of the tower and then having that predictive log down an excellent play and it really kind of sealed the deal in this matchup here for morton but he does actually give up a mortar lock here certainly not what he wanted to have happen we do connect with the goblin barrel there and then princess is going to take care of that goblin gang are we going to log no, we don't need to log. Oh, we did it anyway. That's going to chip away. Bring us to rocket range, and boom! GG tower down. So there it is, guys. Making it look easy is Morton, and I hope this video helped you out. Obviously, this is not a new deck. This is not a deck that I have never shared on the channel before, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to take a look at old archetypes that are still popular and viable in the game, kind of revisit them, cover certain strategy tips like we used to do way back in the day here on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed, and, and take a look at his profile. Look at this. One point well, okay, I lied. 1.12 million cards won. That's incredible. That is incredible. So a special shout out to Morton for coming on the channel. Check out his player stats and profile in the description below. Thanks to StatsRoyale.com. Huge shout out to Brent Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Thank you for watching all the way till the end of the video, guys. I really appreciate it. And as always, take care, guys.